So late last night, early this morning, whenever you logged into Call of Duty here for the first time today, you may have noticed a few things have changed, mainly a larger update you needed to download. That update 1.14 for Black Ops Cold War is that of the mid-season update, season two reloaded, bringing with it a handful of new things and a bunch of content additions and changes and alterations. Today, we're going to run down everything that changed from the front facing additions that you can see for yourself to the things on the back end that you may otherwise not be aware of that have actually changed. As we go along with your thoughts down below, what do you guys think of this update so far? You like it, dislike it, love it, hate it, whatever it is, feel free to let me know. But if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related, especially as we round into the update week here. We have Warzone's content coming as of tomorrow. We'll talk about all of that and keep you in the loop. But if you guys are interested in joining the community, we're getting closer to 400,000 subscribers, so I'd love to have you. And finally, make sure you check out Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market. Protect your eyes and feel comfortable all at the same time. But anyways, let's talk about this update. So if you logged on for the first time since this update and you saw anything from a 7.4 gigabyte update all the way up to a 14.18 gigabyte update, there's of course a lot to talk about and a lot of things that were added in here as of this update. But I think I want to start today on a different subject subject matter than that of the actual content and new DLC that was added, because we've mentioned some of that here before. But instead, I want to talk about some of the weapon adjustment, the weapon tuning, the first major weapons tuning pass that we've had since December. Now, for this to preface and reiterate, these weapon changes and adjustments are Cold War specific and are not indicative of any war zone balancing. So far, as of the time of recording this, Raven hasn't made any details at all about the coming patch outside of what was described in the Call of Duty blog, discussing the one-time larger download that's meant to reduce file size overall. That will likely be out later today and naturally as of tomorrow with the update, but for the time being, the information at hand is dealing with Cold War. So when we discuss things like the FFAR getting a slight buff, it's not applying to the already ungodly powerful FFAR in Warzone. But for the weapon balancing here, we end up having the Krig 6, starting us off with a few weapon adjustments here, in which firstly, it improved the visibility when firing in ADS. There is a complete tuning pass on the weapon's accuracy, weapon movement, and visual clarity while firing with an optic attachment, and it addressed instances where the weapon would feel as they described floaty when firing for a prolonged amount of time. The FFAR saw an increased ballistic speed by 12.8%, a buff there. The Groza saw an increased maximum damage range by 40%, a significant buff there. And the Milano 821 ended up seeing a couple of things here at this. An increased mid-range damage by 10%, an increased mid-range damage range by 33%, an increased sprint out speed by 14.2%, an increased raise speed by 11%, and a slight increase to the ADS in speed. Now, to me, they conveniently made this thing worlds better right after they introduced a new Milano reactive blueprint. Coincidence? I think not! The KSP was next up on the chopping block here at this, in which they increased the ballistic speed by 32.5% and reduced the burst delay by 20%. So this thing was already pretty solid and now is definitely going to be a contender as a mainstay for SMGs in the public realm. The AK-74U had a reduction in the accuracy with prolonged fire and a reduction in muzzle velocity by 23.4%. So significant nerfs to that. The LC-10 had a reduction in the max damage range by 41% and a slight reduction in the mid-range damage. So definitely putting that thing in the ground a little more. The MAC-10 had a modified bullet pattern to add slightly more horizontal trajectories and recoil there. And then overall, for both assault rifles and SMGs in terms of attachments, there's a complete tuning pass on muzzle and under barrel attachments that affect recoil. The stoner was adjusted as well, in which it reduced the maximum damage range by 25%, which is interesting because the damage range wasn't the thing people were having issues with. It was overall the TTK, things to come down to factors like your damage per shot, your fire rate, things like that. So Odd that that's changed out of that. Sniper rifles ended up having the glint effect disabled when an iron sight attachment was equipped, which is an odd thing to even have to begin with. Seems like a strange bug that lasted way too long. The 1911 increased the ADS speed by 11%. The Magnum saw a slight decrease in the hip fire accuracy. The dual wheeled attachment had bullet trajectories that are now more varied when firing both guns simultaneously. And also the 4.7 inch takedown barrel was almost entirely redesigned here to now be the tight snub barrel in which it adds damage to both enemies and vehicles. The RPG had a slight increase in the blast radius and also greatly increased the length of the straight rocket flight path. Launchers overall had a buff in which they now inflict more damage to enemies with flak jacket and hardcore, though still requiring you to direct hit somebody for a one-hit kill. The attachment of the infantry V-choke had an updated description to clarify the pros and cons. And also, finally, weapon progression overall for weapon tuning had a nice little update that allows players to earn weapon XP and challenge progress by using any weapon, even if they don't currently own it. 
So definitely nice to hear that. But that's the weapon adjustments we ended up seeing here. And the first weapons tuning passed since December. Three months have passed since our last time that we saw any real weapons touched here and there. We had one or two slight and minor adjustments to weapons, but nothing that really was drastic like some of these changes here at this. Overall, though, for the new content introduced with Season 2 Reloaded, we have a handful of things to talk about. Firstly, let's talk about the maps. Miami Strike was introduced as a 6v6 map in which it's redesigned and layouts, pathing, and overall feel from the original Miami. And of course, perhaps the most notable thing is that it's set during the day rather than at night, so visibility is much better than what it was within the original. Now, playing a bit of this here, I'm not 100% sold on it, but it has the potential to grow on me. I think that I just need to play a little bit more of it, learn the map a bit more, and maybe I can make a better judgment come a later point. But for right now, it seems all right. I'm going to jump in and keep playing here with it, get a little bit more of a hands-on feel. Mansion was introduced in the 2v2 and 3v3 formats, in which, like we mentioned, hailing from the campaign mission in Cuba, this has the same mannerisms that you'd expect. Aesthetically, it's a cool level design, in my opinion, and functionally speaking, in terms of flow, it didn't seem half bad for my first initial runs throughs of it. So jump in, try it out, both in gunfight or in face-off. Personally, I think I'm going to jump into face-off. Still really enjoying that. Then we have Golova as our third and final map introduced here with this update, in which this is in the multi-team designation. So you'll see it in the multi-team game modes for those specific multi-team modes, but also in fire team as well. So you may notice this layout and build from Outbreak. And if you do, you've got the jump start on everybody who doesn't. This is coming straight from there. And again, being part of that fire team and multi-team mode for Hardpoint, it's definitely a map that's high action, but in a less traditional way. Obviously, the higher player count is cool. The vehicles are nice, the more open world everything like that, but I think it's a nice addition to the larger sets of play, though I will say straight up though, I really wish the traditional 6v6 had more of an offering this update, or at least throughout the rest of the season. It doesn't really seem like we're going to be getting anything outside of just these three. So unfortunately, this is all we got here in terms of maps. 6v6, I think is a little neglected here, but moving over to the next items of business new modes, multi-team hardpoint is again, that big one that's being marketed with this update. This one takes that multi-team that we experienced within Black Ops 2, brings it back up to current day, but then also cranks the dial to 11. Instead of, I think it was four teams that we saw in multi-team within Black Ops 2, this is now now, 10 teams of four playing on fire team maps capturing hardpoint and actually since the last mention of it publicly it's been adjusted a little bit first the score limit is higher than what we previously thought we had seen previously reported that it was 500 but the score limit is now 1000 also each teammate in the hill contributes one point per second to your score meaning that if all four of your team are in the hill you're pulling down four points per second of hill owned so that's pretty cool each hill is also going to last 120 seconds, so two minutes, and you'll be able to rotate in and out of hills to try and crush the opposition. So I'm looking forward to jumping into this one a lot more here. It's definitely an interesting experience when I first jumped on, but then also we saw that Prop Hunt returned as well, this time coming back with two more maps in the rotation, Miami Strike and Satellite. But players will also now see new props introduced here within the mode, which may offer a little bit of a competitive edge to those that initially know these ones or maybe don't. So jump in, try that out, play around with it. Moving over to the zombies aspect of Black Ops Cold War, we ended up seeing a couple of things introduced in terms of content here at this. Outbreak, we saw a handful of things. We've talked about a lot of these though. Sanatorium at night, a cool new feel to the familiar landscape of Sanatorium, a new objective, secure, the new in-game intel, the new dirt bike vehicle, things like that. We also saw that Onslaught for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 users ended up getting a new LTM here at this called Containment, in which it's Onslaught, but on gunfight maps. Now, what's also cool about this is it comes with a blueprint challenge in the mode to earn the exclusive Jungle Fighter Tactical Rifle Blueprint. Also, in terms of just overall Onslaught, there are a couple of things that were adjusted that now makes it a bit more accessible for play, I think, in terms of those that do play it. You're now going to see things like level two and three armor drops, ammo mod drops, dark ether drops to upgrade your weapons, and new bronze, silver, and gold chalice drops that will allow you to pack a punch your weapon for the first time in Onslaught. So that's pretty cool. Also within zombies, we see blueprint support, which now will allow weapons to be applied in the pause menu to any weapon or any weapons purchased from that wall. So you can customize your stuff a little further, even in game. And finally, Dead Ops Arcade 3 has a couple of things here in which they added the silverback sideways bonus map to the mix, in which is kind of that side scroller way to play Dead Ops Arcade, as opposed to the either third person arcade style or that first person mode if it's around. Now, that's some of the main things that we saw introduced in terms of new content that's available, that's playable. But when it comes down to some of the featured modes and what you can experience straight from the game's playlist. We have Miami Strike 24-7, Multi-Team Hardpoint Golova, Multi-Team Mosh Pit, which is a mosh pit of different multi-team modes, including that new 40-player hardpoint. So if you want to try out all of them, you can. Prop Hunt returns, Snipers Only Mosh Pit stays, Nuketown 24-7, Gunfight, and Face Off as well all stay throughout this week. Personally, I'm pretty happy with these game modes. I think that's a solid featured list here for this week. But then let's talk about some changes you may not necessarily see 
but may experience. That being some of the more technical changes here within Black Ops Cold War and this update. Now, two of the biggest ones in terms of these technical changes, I think come down to some movement adjustments as well as some league play changes, though there's a handful of other things as well we'll talk about in just a second. For movement, Treyarch slightly reduced the speed of changing stances from stand, crouch, and prone, and gave additional adjustments to come to address remaining disparity between first person and third person perspectives, which is commonly seen as a snaking issue. So to me, I think that's definitely nice to see it fixed out. That was definitely an exploit in terms of the movement, but that was taken care of. We'll see how effectively it was taken care of or if that issue does persist. Then in terms of league play adjustments, we ended up seeing the Lawbreaker wildcard will no longer allow any weapon to be put in either weapon slot in league play. Players will only be able to use a primary and a secondary weapon. So if you want to run two primary weapons in league play, you'll need to pick up one off the ground. But also Lawbreaker will now allow players to equip multiple perks from the same perk category. In addition, the Perk Greed wildcard will now be restricted completely in League Play. But also, outside of that, there's now new match suspension penalties for players who quit mid-match or engage in friendly fire to ensure a better competitive experience for all players. They say that these penalties will escalate with multiple offenses, so definitely be aware of that. Definitely nice, though, I think that they're adding more penalties in for players that do end up trying to grief a team, so I'm here for that one. Other technical changes come down to your things like your combat record, where it added a vehicle station. It addressed an issue with the killed by stat not tracking properly. There were adjustments, of course, made to some maps, including those introductions of Miami Strike Mansion and Galova. Apocalypse Hardpoint had an issue addressed where players could capture the P3 Hardpoint outside of the intended boundary. The Pines, Raid, and Garrison also had a few other mode-specific changes made to them. The game mode control now adds more custom game options like the time per segment and overtime rules. Gunfight now has gunfight-specific mode medals, with Battle Chatter now disabled in gunfight and gunfight variants. And in terms of overall adjustments, the minimap saw an adjustment where enemy dots will now be prioritized over top of objective icons, whereas they were not before. So that's definitely a big change here for all of that. As always, there was an abundance of zombies adjustments here in terms of gameplay and stability fixes. So that's something that you can take a look at. I'll leave the patch notes down there in the description below, but to just save you guys probably three, four minutes of reading out monotonous line by line adjustments of changes, there's been a lot made here in terms of the smaller back end fixes. Now, the final thing that we normally talk about with these updates is that of the shop. Right now, there was no shop update as of today because that normally happens and is scheduled on rotation on Thursdays and on the weekends. But because this is an update that happened as of Monday night into a Tuesday, it didn't really quite hit anything of that scheduled release. But if you guys missed it, there was that Tracer Pack Rosé Reactive, which again, as we mentioned, is for the Milano, which is now buffed and pretty solid. It can hold its own. And that as well, coming along with an AK-47 blueprint and a few other smaller items for 2,000 COD points. If you guys are interested in that, if you guys would like to support the channel a little further, like Harold, Reckless, Sean, and Matthew have, you can use code ESPRESSO in the in-game item shop in that supporter creator category. It's entirely optional, 100% up to you. But if you guys decide to support the channel a little further, tweet me a picture i'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos but anyways that's the update in a nutshell that's everything that we had here that changed as of today again later tonight into tomorrow we'll end up seeing of course that warzone update as well which is going to be by size definition massive it's 50 plus gigabytes for all platforms and then on pc for warzone and modern warfare over 130 gigs so it's going to be huge and we're probably going to be learning a lot more about that but of course we'll break down everything that changes there as well as of that update going live so stick it here on the channel throughout the day and as of tomorrow we'll keep it to date with absolutely everything you need to know but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to drop a like down below and of course if you're new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so a single thing running all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related, especially here as we round into this mid-season update and everything that is either publicly showcased or maybe even hidden on the back end, that game file side of things. We'll keep it today with everything you need to know and every change made. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Probably live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.